Joseph Coney. Joseph Coney, Joseph Coney, Joseph Coney. All Facebook is a buzz with Joseph Coney. Make him famous in 2012. We're going to save the children, save the children of Uganda. Well, guess what? You remember Nineveh? Remember Nineveh, the place that Jonah preached to in the Bible? The place that repented at the words of Jonah? Well, many years later, Nineveh got her judgment. A generation came that would not repent. They were full of murders. Talk about murders of children in Joseph Coney. God knows what Joseph Coney has done. But all you people in the United States of America, all you liberals and all you people uh, full of self-righteous indigna indignation toward this warlord for his uh, abuses of, of children, need to, need to turn a mirror like a vampire, turn a mirror around on your own face and see what you've done. Because I'll tell you what, you've got Joseph Coney beat exponentially in terms of body count of children. Ah, you don't want to take it seriously. It's called legalized abortion. Look at the way you've pushed it on Africa. You've pushed it on the whole world. Your sacrament of death. Murdering the most defenseless babies. Maybe even if everything that they say about Joseph Coney is true. Let's just say that it's true. I don't know. I haven't done the research. I'm not going to jump on the, the bag, bandwagon one way or another. But let's just say for the moment, for the sake of argument, that it's true. At least those kids possibly had a chance to run away. We're talking about the most defenseless, the tiniest people. Conceivable. Pun intended. The tiniest people who have nowhere to run away in the safest place in the world, the womb of a woman. And the United States of America and the people they have allowed to rule over them, like gods, have decided to show themselves like gods all over the world and say, we are the human herd managers and, and the demographics of Africa is grown too big. They've had too many children and so we have got to curb their population. Yeah, because you're threatened by them. You're threatened by Africa, Europe. You're threatened by Christian Africa. You're threatened by Christian Africa, United Kingdom, because you forgot Christ. And you forgot your covenant with Him. Just like Israel did. Just like Nineveh did, who repented. They were, they were pagans, heathens, like our British ancestors, our Irish, our Scottish ancestors, our European ancestors were all pagans. Just like the Ninevites. Well, the Ninevites heard the word of Jonah, they repented, but a generation came that decided that God would never really judge, would never really make good on His threats and promises. They decided they could ignore the word of the Lord God Almighty and ignore His law. They became puffed up and self-righteous and they made themselves the judges of the whole earth. They, ex they established hegemony, military hegemony. They controlled the world. But God knocked them down. And you won't hear this preached about in churches on Sunday, but when you think about Joseph Coney, and you try to get on some kind of moral bandwagon, you realize it's the pot calling the kettle black. It's the pot calling the kettle black. Millions of, tens of millions, numbers, unimaginable numbers, here domestically in the United States alone that we have slaughtered of our own children. A day of reckoning is coming. You think God's changed? You think He's forgotten? You think He doesn't see? You better think again, buddy. You better think again. You can knock me off, and you can knock off all the people that God sends to remind you about it, because God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You can put us in holes and in jail and knock us off, but you can't run from the one who sees everything. You can't run and you can't hide. Let's hear what he says. You don't hear this preached about, but let's hear what... God said to Nineveh, to Nineveh, and it's a word that applies not only to Nineveh, but Nineveh as an example of every nation, Jew or Gentile, every nation that forgets the law of God, mocks him, ignores the people that he sends to warn them. What does he say? Nahum chapter 3. Read the first two chapters yourself. It all applies. If you get it, if you have ears to hear. Nahum chapter 3, Woe to the bloody city! 
Woe to the bloody city, it is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip, the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses and jumping chariots. The horseman lifts up both bright sword and gl glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms, talking about prostitution here, the highest level of prostitution, the prostitution of nations, the prostitution of nation states, these are my own words now, talking about the prostitution where a great economy reaches out to lesser economies and says, if you will follow us in disobeying the law of God, murdering your babies, legalizing sodomy, legalizing everything that God hates, uh, desecrating marriage, divorcing any, any time you want to, marrying anyone you want to, ignoring the laws of God that are there to protect us and give us life, then we'll give you money. We'll give you access to our economy. That's the spirit of prostitution that Nineveh embodied. Rome embodied it too, at one point. Nineveh embodied it. Babylon. The spirit of Babylon and the whore of Babylon. And if the shoe fits, wear it. Any generation, any generation in this generation, guess what? The shoe fits. You've murdered your children. You've slaughtered them. Listen to what the prophet Nahum says. Because of the multitude of whoredoms, verse 4, of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms, and families, in other words, tribes of people, through her witchcrafts. Verse 5, Behold, I am against thee saith the Lord. Now let those words resonate through your ears. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord. Now Pharaoh heard words similar to these in the days of Moses, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? Are you going to do the same? Are you going to do the same? You better listen. These are not my words. Behold, I I am against thee, verse 5, Nahum chapter 3, saith the Lord of hosts, I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. Bible scholars look at verse 5 here, and they tell us that there was a custom in the days of the prophet Nahum, where in a man who had a wife or concubine, and who caught her in adultery, caught her messing around with another man, the custom was to take her and publicly tie her up to a stake in the middle of the town, basically put her in stocks and take her skirts and lift them up so everybody could see her nakedness and put her to shame. Tie them up above her head and pelt her with, with dung, is what the King James Bible says, with animal shit. Throw chunks of poop at her. So everybody could see, this is what a whore looks like. She thinks she's beautiful. She thinks she's priceless. She's trash. She's made herself cheap. Maybe she got paid a lot, but she got paid to make herself cheap. And she thinks she's big stuff. She thinks she's real beautiful. But you know what? She's ugly. She's ugly on the inside. Yeah, maybe it was a cruel practice. You might think so. You might think so, but God says He's willing to do it. Because the real cruelty comes from the spirit of prostitution. The satanic Jezebel spirit of prostitution that leads to child murder and leads people to tempt people against the will of the law of God, to tempt people to, to disobey God, to leave the Word of God which protects us from death so that we can live lives free of curses and instead invite these curses into, our, into their nations. Well, there are people God will not leave himself without a witness on the earth. Verse chapter 6, I will cast abominable filth on thee, literally dung, refuse, awful, O-F-F-A-L, shit, and make you vile and set you as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that everyone that shall look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Oh, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Art, there out, art thou better than populous Noah that was situated among the rivers that had the waters round about it? 
whose rampart was the sea, and her wall from the sea. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. Put and Lubim were thy helpers, yet was she carried away, carried away, and went into captivity. And her young children were dashed in pieces at the tops of the street, and they cast lots for our honorable men, and her great men were bound in chains. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, and thou shalt seek strength because of the enemy, and all thy strongholds shall be like fig trees. With the first ripe frigs, if they be shaken, they shall fall into the mouth of the eater. And behold, thy people in the midst of thee are like women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. What is he saying? Thy people are like women. They have an entry point between their legs. You're going to get raped. And you've invited it. You've opened up to it. You've got gates right in the middle of you. You've turned into a woman. You're not men. You don't defend the truth. You don't care about what's right or justice. What is God saying? Your people are pussies. Your people are pussies. They're ready to be raped. And I'm going to let it happen because you murdered my children. You better hear it. You don't like the way it sounds in your ears? It doesn't tickle your ears? Well, that's not what God is here for. God's not here and His Spirit is not here to tickle your ears. You like your ears tickled? Well, you quench the Holy Spirit of God and then you got no hope, Mr. Woman, man, you got no hope. You like to have your ears tickled. You'll get them. Enjoy it. The day of vengeance is on its way. You better repent now. The New Testament says God is not mocked. He has not changed. Whatsoever a man, a human being sows, that also shall he reap. So when you think about Ugandan warlords and how bad they are and how we've all got to come together on Facebook to stop them, you're ridiculous. Disgusting. It's laughable. You're the ones who brought death to innocent children. And you better you go ahead and try to ignore me, try to put that out of your mind. It'll creep up on you. It's going to catch you. If you don't listen to me, just don't listen to the other people that God has sent to warn you. You just wait and see. It's coming to get you. Not because of me, because God will make you reap what you've said.